Hey everybody, it's Matt with Everywhere Auto Repair. Today we're working on a, I think it's like 2005, 2006 Chevy Colorado. We're gonna be replacing the master cylinder and the brake booster. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the battery. So I'm gonna start with a 13 mil on this particular one. Uh, yours might be different. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove these two flare nuts. Now you can't see this one, uh, but I don't wanna move the camera. So I'm gonna show you on this one. It's a 10 mil flare nut. Now I threw on a regular 10 mil. My gear wrench one, look, and you'll see there's just a bunch of play to it. The reason I did that is because I did not have a flare nut. I did not have a flare nut wrench on hand. So I went and bought one because I'll tell you, I took about a half a turn and you can actually even see it in the in the video. It's a little bit rounded right there. So it started to round it off. So don't mess around with this guys. Just go buy a flare nut wrench. I spent like 40, I, uh, like $50 on metric and uh, standard flare nut wrenches and this is a 10 mil so we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up and you can see this is gonna take quite a while because these are pretty long the threads are pretty long on on these fittings but hopefully, after a little bit, she'll loosen up to finger tight and I'll be able to just spin it off. Okay, so that was a pretty laborious process. But right there, we got that to come out and you can see the fitting is loose. Now, this is gonna make a little bit of a mess, uh, but I'm in my own driveway right now working on this, so I don't really care. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is get this, get this other fitting off. Here, I'll move the camera a little bit. Get this other fitting off right there. It does not wanna focus, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And then I'm gonna go ahead. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you right here is you can't take this, you can't get the wrench in here to turn because this plug, this plug with that tag is in the way of, that plug interferes with the path of the wrench. So the way to get it out is, the way to get it out, I took a little screwdriver and I stuck it in this little tab right here and I just spaced it out a little bit, just kind of pried it open and then I pulled on it. Mine came out really easy. You can use WD-40 if you can't get uh, your plug out. Again, I just stuck a little screwdriver in there and just twisted just a little bit and then pulled on it with my other hand. Okay, so I broke that first one loose. I'm using my flex head ratchet, a six inch extension, and then a deep well 13. What I'm gonna do right now is set my, or no, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up the other one before I take the first bolt, the first nut all the way off. And I'm gonna get this pretty loose.
All right, now that's pretty loose. I'm gonna take my stubby ratchet and that's gonna make my life a lot easier. Take the stubby ratchet. Got that one finger loose. I don't need a third hand to get in here and get this nut off. Kind of tight fit. Yep, lost it. Now, just gonna pull. I'm gonna pull these two little lines out of the slots. I'm gonna do my best to be nice to these brake lines. You don't wanna bend them or pinch them or anything. Now I'm pulling that out. Oh, you heard that vacuum. <sighs> all right, now that we got the master cylinder off, you can see all this buildup from years of seepage. The customer said that ever since he bought the car, uh, I think he said 10 years ago, it hasn't ever had a good brake pedal, and I'm not surprised. So we're gonna, uh, at this point, you could go ahead and uh, put your new master cylinder on. We're gonna replace the booster also, so stick around if you need to replace your booster also. Otherwise, you can go ahead and skip to the part where I install the new master cylinder. All right, now we're inside the cab of the car, the cab of the truck, and we're underneath the dash and see there's the brake pedal right there and then right here this is the ins this is the brake booster on the inside of the vehicle and this clevis pin right here there's a clevis pin right there has to come out and the first thing we have to do to do that is take this retaining pin off so let's see if i can do this with one hand I'm going to stick my little screwdriver in there. I'm just gonna twist and see. While I have the screwdriver twisted, I'm pulling away from it. So it's gonna take two hands, but you see what I'm trying to do, so just do what I do. There, so once I got a second hand in there, it was no big deal. Now, this pin, see this pin? It's gonna come out uh, right there. And now, now that thing is loose. Uh, now, uh, okay. Now we're gonna be taking uh, these bolts out. There's another one uh, somewhere up here. You can't really see inside the cab. So I'll show you on the new one. Just take these four bolts out. And then it'll start to, and then you'll be able to pull the thing out. All right, I took all four nuts off inside. Now you see this little vacuum hose. We're gonna go ahead and take this off now. Well, it's kind of stuck on there. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna just pop this whole, so this part right here is on the new brake booster. So I'm just gonna pry this whole thing out. And then, now I've got this thing on my terms. I don't have to sit there and fight with it while it's on the booster itself. 
now that's out. And I took all the nuts off from inside, so this thing should pull right out. So the plunger that goes inside the cab is kind of stuck in there. And we've got brake lines down here that are interfering, but I think we can get this out. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this hose off at that spot too to get it out of the way. Off of there. Oh yeah. I don't know why this this one doesn't want to go. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll just pull nice and easy on it. And this type of clip should be able to. If you just twist it a little bit. I don't know. We're just going to sit here and fight it. You can make fun of me in the comments. If you've made it this far, go ahead and like and subscribe. Oh yeah! Got that clip down lower on the hose. And now, we're going to use a little screwdriver. Do a little prying action. Now, Sometimes what will happen is you'll take a screwdriver and you'll start to pry and the hose will just start peeling off as you're prying instead of the hose pushing off all the way. Just replace the hose, okay? If it's, if it's dry rotted like that, just get rid of it. It's going to give you trouble in the future anyways. This one should be replaced, but we're not going to be replacing it today and it's not causing any trouble right now. And it's easy enough to replace in the future if the customer decides to go that route. So now we got that hose out of the way. We should have room. I'm just kind of wiggling little things past the booster as it hangs up. Everything's a little bit flexible. Oh yeah, and there we go. Got that guy out of there. Now, we'll take our new one. And we'll put it, we'll try and slip her right in just as easy as it came out. Usually it goes in easier because gravity. So I'm taking my left hand and I'm feeling against the firewall to guide in the plunger. And now it's in there, it's in the cab. I'm gonna just kind of try and force it, and that didn't work. But okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the cab and try and pull the booster a little bit. Now I'm gonna be gentle though because if you look at this. If you pulled really hard on this, you could probably damage it.
So it's not really easy to line up these holes. But I'm peeking around on the right side so that I can see what's going on. There's really nothing to it but to do it. Just about got it lined up. It's getting caught up on the brake lines down here. So we're gonna try and slip it past. It's really important not to damage any of the brake lines. Oh, you know what happened? This one's not exactly the same. Oh, no, I just had it oriented wrong. So now, it should go in now, I think. Yeah, things are pretty, things are pretty lined up, I think. Oh, boom, yes. All right, is that going to work though? Is this where the, because you see this thing is in a little bit of a different position. So it worries me that it might not clear our master cylinder. Okay, I take it back. It looks like it is actually in the same, same orientation. This little plug right there. Now I'm gonna go inside the cab and put those four nuts back on. I'm gonna tighten them up, nothing crazy. Like tight is tight enough, all right guys? All right, so I went ahead and tightened up the four bolts inside the four nuts inside the cab and we ran into a little issue. After I tightened up the nuts inside the cab, I decided before I went any further, I would go ahead and test fit the master cylinder do you see anything wrong? You see something wrong here? Yeah, it's a little cockeyed. And uh, you know, I, I thought something was wrong with this booster. So I'm glad that I tested this. What's, what's going on is that the, these bolts right here are not in the right place. And if you look right there, it says manufactured in Mexico. So I guess I guess it's not too crazy to have uh, uh, quality control issues coming out of Mexico. But now I have to, it took a week for this to come in the mail or for this to get shipped to the parts store. So now what I'm gonna have to do is call the customer and explain to him that it's gonna be not just one week, but maybe another, another week. So this is unfortunate. You don't really look like the hero whenever you uh, have to do a job twice. So that's what's gonna happen now. I'm gonna have to do this job twice and I'm gonna have to file a labor claim with AutoZone because they sold a defective part and I have to do the job twice. And this is why you need to have an AutoZone commercial account if you're a mechanic because what if the customer buys the part on their DIY account and this happened? AutoZone's not gonna pay for you to do this job twice. You're just gonna have to eat it. Especially in the situation like this, I'm already halfway through the job. What am I supposed to do if the, uh, am I supposed to make the customer pay twice? No. Am I supposed to do the job twice for free? No. I just only install parts that I buy on my account. So that's what the issue is. Uh, I guess we'll just come back another day whenever, uh, whenever I get the right part, guys. All right, so we're back here again, two days later. Let's see if the replacement replacement brake booster lines up. You tell me. Does that look anywhere close? At least it's not completely crooked now, but the thing's just not lining up. 
It's absurd. All right, so we're back here the next day. Uh, the Let me start by explaining why the brake booster that you just saw in the last clip is in fact the right brake booster. So as you can see, uh, it's the same one, but what it is is that there was a white spacer on the back of this that came on the OEM AC Delco one. And I just didn't have that on there. I didn't notice it, didn't realize that I needed it. I'll put a picture up of the little spacer so you know, transfer it over to the new one if, if the new one doesn't come with it. Uh, the first, the first replacement was for sure defective. The bolts were in the wrong place for mounting the master cylinder. But in any case, I spent the whole night last night getting this thing in. And then I spent uh, today doing the rear brakes on the truck, which is not something that we're going to cover. But anyways, let me just cover how to finish installing the brake booster and master cylinder. So once you've got your master cylinder, or I mean your brake booster fed down into the hole with those four studs sticking through, that you can see two right there, but there's two more up there that you can see. Go ahead and tighten those down. Tight is tight enough, guys. One thing to make sure of is this little thing right here, just get that lined up before you start tightening anything. And then once it's lined up, you can see the little clevis pin right there with the little clip on there. Just stick it, stick the pin through, and then fit the fit the clip on there. If you can't figure out the clip, uh, well. And then once you have the booster in, you're ready to go ahead and install your master cylinder. Now, even with this brake booster being uh, correct, I had a really, really tough time lining up, lining up our fittings. So before I tighten down these two mounting bolts, I actually fit these on here and started the threads for, for the brake fittings. And then once I got those start, the threads started, then I tightened it all the way down to the booster. Now for, for bleeding the brakes, you need, or for bleeding the mass cylinder, you need to bench bleed the mass cylinder. Uh, one way to do this is put it in a vise and I mean, you can look up instructions on, on how to do a bench bleeding. I don't have any videos on it. The way that I did it though, I will put a link to the video that shows the method that I used. I and then after you've got your mass cylinder bled and installed correctly, throw your battery back on. Well, there you go guys. I hope this video helped you. If it, if it did, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Keep an eye up the hill guys.